brought to you in part by Mountain View Auto Group, prepare for the off-road, and also by Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm David Mays and this is Amazing Life. One of the things that we needed as part of our build for overlanding was a way to carry fresh food for several days without needing to find ice. Uh, so from the beginning we knew we were going to have to purchase a fridge and initially I thought I wanted the fridge in the trailer, but then after further thought, um, thinking, considering leaving it at base camp and wanting to have our food with us, it seemed a better idea to put it in the back of the Jeep. Now many of you may be aware of the Goose Gear system which is an amazing system, uh, especially if you're doing the whole rear. Uh, but all we were doing, all I needed was a, a plate to just go in the rear because I was leaving my seats in place. So considering all I needed was that simple mounting platform, I thought I could make one. Now, based on that, I decided to make a birch plywood plate uh, that mounts to the frame and would provide a really sturdy solution uh, for a mounting solution for the Ice Coast slide mount. Now, in the description above, is a link to our website where you can download the measurements and hardware needed uh, to make your own. Now, I want to start out by saying I'm not a carpenter, all right? I am marginal at this type thing at best. Uh, so if I can pull it off, uh, know that you can too. Here's how the install went. First step is to remove the existing rear cover and mount plates that are secured to the frame with six bolts, uh, which we'll use later to secure the plywood to the frame. The existing tie downs could be reused on the right side but I elected not to in the event I decided to add drawers at a later time. Underneath the carpeting, you will see the frame that we will attempt to butt up against with our plywood platform. I elected not to notch around the seat bolts and rather just kept it simple and square to ensure a solid fit. I also needed to retain access to the included jack, so a notch was gonna to need to be made in order to keep it accessible. I really wanted to leave access to the hidden compartment, and I may add an access door on the right-hand side in the future, but elected not to for this portion. It got a lot simpler once I realized it's just a rectangle with one end notched for the plastic molding and the jack cover. So I took measurements of the initial rectangle, ignoring the notch requirements until after the rough cut was made. The type of plywood I chose to use was uh, birch versus the regular rough cut plywood. It's gonna make sanding much simpler because it's already smooth. Uh, as well as um, it's a nicer wood, but that really doesn't matter from the nice part because I'm gonna paint it black anyway, uh, but I did want it to have a lot less work in sanding. And so it does cost more, uh, as you know, uh, lumber has gone up tremendously. Uh, and so I think this thing was almost $80. Now, it, it, I bought a four by eight, I only need half of it. And so um, while I was at Lowe's, because I couldn't fit it in the back of my Jeep, um, I had them cut it in half. Um, actually, I, cut, I had them cut it closer to what I knew I was going to need and and so that left me a chunk uh, left over as well so if I screw up I do at least have the option to try again so here we go I transferred the measurements that I took from the Jeep to the plywood and prepared it for cutting using a table saw made it a lot easier to make the straight cuts necessary for this build Now to test whether it fit, and it did. Now to fix the notches for the plastic molding and the jack cover.
After getting a solid fit with the plate, it was time to drill the mount holes in the plate to the frame of the Jeep using the existing six holes. I used a box like a template to determine where the holes needed to be in the wood. Okay, so for the most part, my haphazard little method of finding the whole uh, spacing worked out okay with the cardboard. Uh, but on the far ones over here, there were two of them that were a little bit tight. Uh, in order to just keep from, I want to make sure I didn't damage uh, the frame itself because that's what you're screwing down into. I went ahead and bored, used a half inch uh, drill bit and bored all of them out to be a half inch to give it a little bit more gap uh, and a little bit more room. And that turned out to be enough uh, to solve the tension, uh, the tightness that I was having on those two. So at this point, I screw all these down and then I need to test uh, the fridge to see where it, where it stands. Placing this, let's see where it fits and where I can I was hoping that these screws were not going to be in the way, and it doesn't look like they're going to be, so that solves that. And so at this point, I can basically mount this down, and I will have a nice gliding. This, these, this rail system is really nice. Uh, it's really smooth. I mean, I can't actually put it. I would like to have it a little closer to the outside. But it looks like that's about as good as it's going to get because I can't go that far. So having that in the corner is about where it's got to be. But the other thing I need to check is when this is in its closed position, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't interfere with this. So I may actually have to scoot it back a little bit. There it goes. Now, gotta make sure that I can actually shut. Oh yeah, plenty of room, not a problem at all. After believing incorrectly that I had a good fit of everything, it was time to sand, then paint. The goal was to bevel all the edges to keep down possible splintering, as well as smooth the top and bottom to ensure a good paint finish. After allowing 24 hours to dry, it was time to attach the slide to the plate. Rather than simply mounting with wood screws, I decided a sturdier solution would be to use these wood insert nuts that would create a very sturdy connection and not rely on just the wood for the grip. These were also flat enough to the wood that they didn't cause issues on the bottom side. I pre-drilled where the holes would go so not to accidentally misalign them to the holes in the slide mount. Once drilled, it was time to hammer in the inserts.
Now it was just a matter of seating the bolts into the inserts and the mount was finished. Well, I thought. So I found this rubber packing, uh, red rubber sheet packing. So it's basically made to, to make your own custom gaskets if you can't find one that like works exactly for what you're needing. And so it comes in, it's variable in sizes, but again, this doesn't have to be perfect. I just simply want some insulation uh, between the metal and the plywood so that there's no chance for anything starting to vibrate and cause wear. The feet underneath the Iceco uh, fridge actually go um, sink into holes that are pre-cut into the tray, so it works out really well for stabilizing it. It also comes with these straps that you can use to secure the fridge to the base. This is the part where I'm supposed to look at the camera with my finished product and show you what a great DIY guy I am. Uh, well, that's just not this video. In reality, I was too disturbed to actually record it, but when I placed the fridge in and slid it to the back, only then did I realize that it was too far back to lock into place with the seat in its locked position. So that led me to this next less than happy phase of as-builds. As it turns out, you do have to drill into the ice coast slide on the back end, as well as make a notch on the front end to allow the lag bolts that go down to the frame to also go through the slide mount. Now, it turns out to leave a very stable install and the measurements I'm leaving you in the description or rather on the website, um, they're the working measurements. Uh, so you hopefully will not uh, have the same redo issue that I ended up having to do. Now, bear in mind, if you use another slide other than the ice co, then it's obviously going to be different measurements uh, as far as where you would drill through the, the slide, uh, but the bolts and the locations on the board won't change. So I hope that works for you. Now I powered the ice co using my Jackery 1000 and I keep it up on the driver's side passenger seat. Uh, and then the Jackery uses the accessory outlet to keep itself topped off while I'm driving. Now this has worked really well for us. Uh, and the Jackery can power the fridge for three days, maybe even longer, um, before it needs a charge. So it's not bad. It still leaves room for charging phones and, and cameras and everything else, the drones and everything else that I carry. Well, that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful um, to you. And if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe as I've got a lot more videos like this coming out, um, both for the Jeep as well as motorcycle adventure travel. So stay tuned. Uh, that's it for me. Until next time, make life amazing.